Bluetooth SIG has announced their 2.1 plus EDR spec. We have a few items here that we're going to take a look at and demo and show you what's new right after this. Let's face it, getting to and from meetings can be a real drag. Driving two hours for a one hour meeting, flying to headquarters for a half day of training. Save time and money by meeting online using GoToMeeting. With GoToMeeting, you invite people to meet you online and during the call, they see your computer screen on their monitor. You meet as often as you want, whenever you want, for one flat rate. Try GoToMeeting free for 45 days, no credit card required. Just visit GoToMeeting.com and type in promo code PODCAST. That's GoToMeeting.com and type in PODCAST for your free trial, no credit card required. Guys, Andrew Edwards here from Gear Live, and we're here with Mike Foley of Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Mike, how are you doing today? Very good. Very Thanks good to for see you. Having us here. So, um, you guys have just announced your Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR spec, correct? That's correct. And whenever we create a new specification, we're always looking at ways to improve the user experience, reduce the amount of power that devices require, as well as making it more secure. And we think we've done all three of those with the 2.1 plus EDR specification. Okay. So uh, let's jump right in. You have a few devices here that you want to show us yes. um, to kind of show off the technology. So okay. let's just get started and uh, take it away. What are you going to look at first? All right, let's start with this mobile phone, which is a prototype from Nokia. And it has incorporated some of our ease of use features that we've de defined in the 2.1 plus EDR specification. And this one is interesting because it uses an optional part of the specification to use another technology called near field communication. Okay that allows the devices to find each other extremely simply. So let me show you how that works. Sure, let's do it. I mean, we've all used our cameras to take pictures before. Very Certainly. popular these days. So I'm going to turn on the camera. We've all used camera phones to take pictures. Certainly. And one of the issues is what to do with the pictures once you have them on the camera. Right. And this a, is a, you mean as opposed to just leaving them on there forever <laughs> and just like showing them to your friends on the screen and never printing them, never putting them on your, on your computer? Is that what you're talking about? It, exactly. You've got the use case that's typical today. And using Bluetooth is a great way to get the picture off. So I'm going to do that. I'll take a picture of you. Okay. Nothing new there. The picture is on, on the camera and ready to use. But what is used now, this is a picture frame, a digital picture frame from one of our members, Parrot. Okay. And using the simple pairing capabilities, all I have to do is hold the phone up to the picture frame, and then the image is transferred directly to the picture frame. And there you are. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Can't be much easier great than image, that, by the way. Um, so you're, well, you're, you're not a great photographer, um, but I'm, yep, I'm not um, claiming my photography capabilities. Obviously, the, the uh, capabilities of Bluetooth. Yep. Excellent. So you so basically all you did was hold the phone up to the to the digital frame here, and exactly. just automatically and the phone set discovers the it. You just have to be near it and then transfer. Similarly, okay. you can do it with the printer. Hold it near the printer. All right, so this is an HP PhotoSmart A618. Yep, with Bluetooth integrated in. Okay. And now, the again, it's a prototype with the new specification, mm -hmm. which allowed me to hold the phone, the camera, next to the printer, and then the image is automatically transferred. And again, it still takes as long normally to print the picture. Okay. So that's going to go on. All right, so as that's happening, you also have a headset here. Yep. Um, and earlier we were talking and you mentioned that the headset isn't large enough to hold one of these uh, touch to pair tags, right? Yep, currently that's the, the way it is in the future. Perhaps those will be miniaturized like everything else and then you would be able to just hold the mobile phone next to the headset. Mm -hmm. But for this prototype, what is done is they've put the tag on the manual. Mm -hmm. And so you hold the phone next to the manual and it finds it and asks you if you want to pair with your headset and you hit accept and then the, uh, the pairing's done. Yep, the pairing's done, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so basically as easy as tapping, tapping up. And uh, hitting OK hitting to verify okay, that you're done. you want. Yep, exactly, and then when you put the headset on, your phone rings, you can use it just like mm -hmm. a normal headset. Okay, so now what, what are some other, uh, some other ways that this uh, touch to connect technology might work? Would you be able to, for instance, hold up uh, a frame to a printer or 
uh, or, or a, a, just a standard digital camera to a printer? Uh, or, probably not the frame to the picture itself, but a digital camera mm -hmm. or with stereo headsets to be able to stream music from your phone to the headset in your car when mm -hmm. uh, you can stream or use your uh, car for hands-free operation the same way to initiate that connection. And again, for devices like your car or your headset, you only have to do it once. Okay. And then it remembers it from then on. Okay. So what are this? Oh, there it is. Yep. Look at that. Again, not a beautiful picture. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. So um, what are some of the other uh, new uh, features of the 2.1 plus EDR specification? We've seen the touch to connect, which is obviously very cool. Um, yep. But what other things are going on? We've optimized some of the protocols that are going to enable lower power usage for devices. So for example, there's a lot of Bluetooth mice and keyboard on the market. And when they implement the new specification, the battery life on those will extend by up to five times. Okay. So much longer usage. Mm -hmm. And then you said there were also some security improvements as well. Yep, we're always looking to enhance the security. Obviously, people's data, they want to ensure that it's secure and nobody can tamper with it or look at that without their consent. So we have, through uh, not only simplified the pairing process, but also enhanced the security in it so that uh, the protection of the user's data is more secure. Okay. And um, when might we be able to expect to see some of the uh, products with the 2.1? plus EDR specification built in. Yep, excellent the question. The specification is just being finalized now, and typically it's a three to six month uh, delay between when the specification is complete and products hit the market. So I'd say definitely by the Christmas time frame. Okay, so uh, this holiday season, uh, yep. we, everything Look. we're putting on our Christmas list, make sure you see uh, 2.1 on there as opposed to the old 2.0, and uh, you'll be able to take advantage of these touch to connect. Um, which I think is actually, the, the from, from my perspective, the coolest feature um, of the 2.1 specification. You know, security is great, um, all those other things are wonderful, but the convenience of just touching and just having things happen magically, I think is awesome. And without a doubt, that was what we call the hallmark feature of the new specification, meaning that's really what we put a lot of time and energy into enhancing the user experience. And uh, this is one example of how it can be done, and we really think that we've hit our goals. So obviously Bluetooth has been out there for a while. Um, everyone uses it. It's not that hard to set up. Is uh, 2.1 really a, a huge measurable difference over 2.0? Well, you are correct. Bluetooth is out there. It's in over a billion devices today, but again, we're trying to always make it better. And I think it is easier to use with the new version of the specification. Perhaps we should do a side-by-side -side okay, comparison. Well, uh, let's, bring, let's bring you in. Kevin Keating, come on in. All right. This is the man right here. Um, and Kevin, okay, so we have uh, two similar uh, Photo frames here, correct? Yep, just different exact, colors, but they're exact same. Exact, exact same yes. model. So you're going to use the new Bluetooth 2.1 plus the new system. Yep. You're going to use 2.0. Yep. And uh, you guys both ready to start this? We're going to start from taking the picture, and it ends when it's on the frame. All right. Here we go, guys. We're going to snap marks. away. Yep. Get set. Here we go. As you can see, they're both taking pictures of my face, and here it begins. So Kevin. Uh, just paired his uh, phone with the frame. Mm -hmm. and, I'm and I'm searching for devices. Okay. I found it. Mike has found the device. Kevin already has it. Oh, he's taking a second picture, mocking you. It's a bad picture. And your uh, the time is taking you to do this. Um, so Kevin, every time you take a photo, you just have to no, push it up to there. You have to select. Okay. So you don't, but you can't push it once and then just send and done. continuous photos. Correct. Okay. So done there. Um, so obviously, you were able to do what, two, two um, in the amount of time that you were able to get one done. So that's yep. almost um, that's one hundred percent faster. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, uh, that's measurable. It's, it speaks for itself. That's how it works. Okay. Bluetooth two point one, marked improvement over two point zero. Um, as you can see, pairing is a lot faster, and there are some other advantages as well, including the muchly improved battery life. Um, until next time, I'm Andrew Edwards. Stay tuned for more technology news through the eyes of GearLive.com.